Ja, einen wunderschönen guten Tag. Mein Name ist Kerstin Mendestief. Ich äh, arbeite für, oder ich bin Herausgeber des storageforum.de und wir haben heute zu Gast einen Hersteller, eine junge, dynamische Firma aus Bulgarien, wobei so jung sind sie gar nicht mehr. Sie haben schon ein bisschen was ähm, erreicht in den letzten Jahren. Bei uns ist heute zu Gast äh, Bojan Ivanov. Er ist einer der Gründer und der CEO von Storepool und ich freue mich sehr, dass er heute bei uns Fragen beantworten wird zu seiner Firma, zu seinen Lösungen ähm, ja und was äh, euch sonst noch so erwarten kann aus dieser Richtung. Welcome, Bojan. It's really nice to have you here today. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Doing quite well. Thanks. Okay, excellent. So first question of all might be interesting for all of our uh, readers or what, uh, viewers is, uh, would you please introduce Storepool um, and its portfolio in three or four not too long sentences, please? Sure. Uh, Storepool is a storage software company. We specialize in new age storage systems that are developed entirely by software or on standard hardware. Uh, we've been running the company for nine years now, and we specialize mostly in uh, large-scale systems for cloud service providers and demanding enterprises uh, in terms of hundreds of terabytes of uh, flash data. And we have customers all over the world uh, and address, as I said, uh, mostly new type of deployments, uh, KVM, Kubernetes, uh, OpenStack, and, and such systems. Okay. What makes Starpool's approach so unique? Um, well, when we started the company in, in very late 2011, nobody was thinking that it's possible to replace a million dollar uh, sandbox, high-end sandbox with software running on standard hardware. Uh, when we started, buzzwords like software-defined storage didn't exist. Uh, and we kind of set up to build one specific system from the ground up uh, to address block storage workloads for demanding mission-critical work databases, uh, virtualized environments, etc. So uh, one of the unique things is that we've done something that was uh, back then considered impossible and we've done it in a very hard way. That, that means, uh, um, you know, starting from the ground up, not using any open source component or ready solution, just writing up the whole uh, solution uh, ourselves, uh, which gives a couple of okay. things. Uh, extreme uh, levels of product quality and reliability, and then also very good performance, very good efficiency. So we require very little resources to deliver performance that that is not um, deliverable by high-end or flash arrays, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it still um, the the product that uh, it's it's no no it's based on open source now, um, I think, or is it still the code no, you not, uh, it's wrote never initially? Been It's entirely Storpool IP, so it's not uh, okay. based on something open source. It's uh, developed for being the uh, best block storage software on the market. So we only do one thing, and we do it extremely well, and everything is written by our team. Okay. Wow. That's impressive. So Storpool describes itself as a distributed storage. As far as I understood, Storpool offers software solution to address several storage drivers via global namespace. What is the difference to other solutions such as Strongbox or other data management systems? Benefits um, in comparison to um, use distributed file systems, for uh, instance, such as Lustre, Lustrefs, or especially the widespread ZFS. How do you Uh, differ. Okay, so there are several uh, different directions in, in which we, we differ. Uh, so if you look at the storage industry, it's easily 100 billion dollars per year. That's a very big market and you can uh, segment it in several different ways. One is the type of solution you offer. Uh, so uh, it could be block file and object or container mm -hmm. storage these days. And we specifically uh, focus on the block storage market. So we're not really competing with file systems or distributed file systems. If, if a person okay. needs a, a block device, they'll go for you know databases, virtual machines, they would need that. If they need to store files, they will not be looking at school. There are several other vendors that are doing very interesting and good things there. So we are focusing on block level storage and also on, on container storage for larger bare metal um, um, deployments. That's on one level. On the other side is product quality, product capability. So we have a new age system that's entirely API driven, 
Uh, and before the buzzword software defined storage, there used to be storage software, uh, but its design was not as flexible, not as fluid, not API first, not cloud native. So it, it, there are good solutions for their time, like ZFS uh, type of solutions. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not uh, scale out or they weren't able to provide millions of IOPS or sub millisecond latency or you know, hundreds of milliseconds like NVMe latency. So all of the things that we are uh, designed from scratch to do, uh, 100 microseconds latency or less, millions of IOPS, uh, entirely API driven system integrations with everything in the new H stack like Qual stack, Open stack, um, uh, Kubernetes and uh, Cloud native technology. So I think that's uh, the unique thing about performance, reliability, scalability. So we can start from 10 terabyte system and seamlessly online with all applications running on top, we can scale it to petabytes. Uh, and that's something that not that many vendors can do. If you go to traditional Sun vendors, that would be three different generations of gear or three different uh, product portfolios, small size, mid size, and large size. We can scale it all in one part. Okay, so okay, that's interesting. I guess I want to know more about that later. Maybe we will uh, dive a little bit deeper into technics, but uh, with one of your colleagues, then that's a really interesting mm -hmm. approach. Um, Stopul has uh, raised two fund rounds already. I also know that Stopul is a renowned member of the open source community. Did Stopul de uh, develop uh, software completely from scratch? Yeah, you answered that question uh, already. You did. And um, do you combine it with existing open source tools or software uh, with a magic glue? Or is it uh, all standalone, all developed by yourself? APIs you mentioned already, so it's a uh, common combinable with others via IPIs, but uh, what comes in your uh, toolbox? So pretty much the entire storage solution is developed by us. When we started in 2011, uh, we were set out to build a, a very proficient distributed system. And back then, one, there were not that many tools, and also the tools that existed were not that good. And uh, we uh, tried to uh, to focus on the core storage technology. And sometimes we try to use existing open source tools or other tools and kind of uh, uh, OEM them, but they were not a good fit. For example, we used Coral Sync and things like that. But if we figured out that we have issues with them and we had to rewrite basically your whole industries, like how do you do Coral management? How do you do on these formats? How do you do network? And we have kind of have our own implementation of on NVMe OF of RDMA of uh, core management. We have our own on disk formats for SSD, HDD, NVMe. Uh, so we have had to basically re-implement the entire storage system underneath the block device. On top, we provide the standard block device that appears as a local disk to a database. Everything underneath is uh, designed from Storable from the ground up from scratch. Uh, for a fully distributed new age system. So pretty much nothing that is uh, somebody else's code or IP or uh, part, parts of uh, uh, pro products. Everything is designed by Storpool. And of course, we have integrations with leading cloud management systems like uh, CSI Driver, which is open source for Kubernetes, uh, for uh, cloud stack, open stack, and also some other uh, things that you can do. You can use our API and integrate in whatever cloud management system you might be using proprietary or bare metal, you want to optima, uh, um, automate something, be it with uh, Ansible or be it with a true IP integration. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds like a lot of work. So is it easy to find developers? You must be a huge force of uh, developers within Storp will run. <laughs> No, it's um, so uh, the joke is when, when we started, we were not as uh, like white haired. Um, I think many companies, especially our competitors, uh, a lot of them are Silicon Valley based or US companies. And they go and raise a lot of money and they spend a lot of money on sales and marketing uh, without a very strong product. We're a European company, we, we did the opposite thing. We built a very strong, robust platform, extremely good. Uh, and we don't spend a lot of sales and mar money on sales and marketing. We kind of sell mm -hmm. organically and we get customers to refer in many cases. To do that, obviously, we had to spend a lot of sleepless nights. So it's a tremendous amount of work. As I said, your you know, set of companies that do just core management or networking. We do all these things together in, in one product by ourselves. 
uh, that means also that we don't need to hire a lot of people. We need to hire people that do things that others believe impossible. So the, the, we okay. have the, the entire team of Storpool currently is about 25 people core, and we have about 10 people also that are doing auxiliary things externally or uh, part time. So about 25 people in total. Uh, and you know we have a small number of extremely extremely good developers to do that. Okay, I think it's it's a good way. So um, from yeah, from my experience, um, the the organic growth is definitely um, the more sustainable uh, way. And the yeah, of of course, I, I still keep my fingers crossed. with really really good um, thing. So you already uh, said where the initial idea um, idea came from. So what did uh, you and the other founders brought together? Did you study okay, so, together or something? <laughs> no, not really. Um, so we had two other IT companies before Sorpo. And uh, you know, some of the founders are extremely technical. They have built service providers in five countries, starting from an empty building. And they go and design uh, hardware assembling, uh, storage network, compute, services on top, wow. software cooling, power, everything, everything. You, you enter in an empty building, you go out and you have a, a service provider working. Um, so they understand a thing or two about building uh, clouds, basically, what now is called clouds. Um, and when we started this company, we went with a different product. Back then we had a company that was doing something that is now called software defined networking. But back then it, it was 2000, uh, 9, 2011, we went to uh, sell that product, but uh, there was not enough market for that. And we asked the companies that were going to, what is your number one problem? And everybody said, it's too expensive, too hard to scale, too slow, requires a lot of management, specialized uh, gear, like fiber channels and stuff like that. And we said, okay, if we forget everything, we know about how to build uh, IT infrastructure today, what would be the solution of the 21st century? We said, well, it has to be software that's managing commodity hardware. Back then, you know, mm -hmm. Google and Amazon were uh, pioneering this approach and, uh, you know, they were making it famous, but it was more research papers that it is possible, but there were not that many implementations of people actually making it possible. For example, there was the Ceph open source project and nobody has heard of that. We heard about Ceph maybe a couple of years after we started the company. And it mm -hmm. also set out to build a, a unified storage platform, which sounds good, but it's very hard to do file object and work well in one code base. They are basically three different, very different requirements. So I said, we're going mm -hmm. to be the best in work, optimize around that, have a very much smaller code base that's very uh, tight, very good, very uh, high performance. And kind of the rest is history. We got the best people we can. We got some small funding that at some point we turned the company cash flow positive and a real storage company servicing real customers in the best way possible, growing and, and not being at the mercy of financial markets or VC markets, etc. Okay. I, I guess I get a glue of uh, why you think that the world needs uh, yet another storage company. So um, I, I will dive a little bit deeper into the technology later then so um, to get it more, but I think we can skip that question. <laughs> Um, okay. What is a typical use case for stop with distributed storage? The typical case would be uh, primary storage, typically flash uh, or NVMe storage that has a certain scale, typically uh, 50 terabytes or more of data. Um, mm -hmm. I think most of our customers uh, have hundreds of terabytes or petabytes of uh, flash data. Uh, that's primary mission critical storage. So to give you a sense, we have workloads of some of the leading enterprises that are running on Storpool. Uh, and uh, they're using us for databases, uh, large virtualized environments, doing infrastructure as a service, software as a service. Uh, so uh, basically demanding uh, applications that have to be up and running 100% of the time. That, that would be the typical case. Uh, mostly, uh, Technology-wise, they're running KVM, and, and these days, if you look at Microsoft Azure, for example, I, I have seen the report that 70% of the workloads running on public cloud are, uh, on Microsoft's public cloud are KVM-based or Linux-based. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the new age enterprise uh, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, they're mostly running KVMs or Kubernetes and Linux. Uh, so we're kind mm -hmm. of a, a, a big player in that domain. Um, and we also have the traditional enterprises running Hyper-V, 
Microsoft or VMware, but that's maybe 10% of our customer base. So that would be mm -hmm. kind of type of size and type of company that's working with us. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. So is there anybody stop whose portfolio is definitely not made for? So I guess smaller uh, companies with a low amount of data, maybe it's a little bit too, uh, um, too much, but. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So um, that, that's a very good question. Who is not a customer of ours or not a good fit? Uh, for example, if you have a small system that requires only 10 terabytes of storage, uh, mm -hmm. maybe the software defined storage approach is not right for you in the first place. There are plenty of simple, small SAN arrays that you can get or OFAS arrays that will do the job. The power mm -hmm. of software defined storage uh, comes when you have to manage either vast amounts of data or large complexity. For example, yeah. if you have 10 data centers that are different across the world, different power density per rack, you know, you need a flexible solution and software defined storage mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to address that need. Or, for example, we've seen customers, one of our customers, for example, is one of the largest MSPs in, in Europe, publicly traded billion dollar company. They acquired 20 other companies. They have so many, so much gear in their data centers, they have all the traditional vendors and it becomes very mm -hmm. complex and hard to manage. In this case, they would need a, a platform to kind of unify all these resources. But if you're not a business like that and you have just one SAN and you know mm -hmm. a Microsoft server on top of it, maybe a, a, a small SAN would be all you need and you don't need to talk to four other software defined vendors. This is an interesting uh, message. So I thought uh, the the more complex a landscape, IT landscape is, um, the better is software defined something um, for for the solution. Just hearing if it's too complex, they'd need another um, solution than yours. This is also interesting. No, no. I, yeah. said, I said if 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 it's complex, it will require. Uh, software defined storage and solutions like Storpool. If it's simple and you don't have complexity, then uh, maybe or a small scale, oh, okay. then a regular solution. Uh -huh. would be. Yeah, complexity uh, is yeah. very well addressed with uh, the best software defined storage solutions. There are above many solutions. And if you look at their website, they're all claiming the same. 70% issue reduction, they're fast, reliable, and scalable. They all claim that. If you look at which are the companies that have the architecture, the technologies, the capabilities, the use cases, the customers that actually can validate that they're delivering it, there are like two companies in the world. And one is Torpo. Okay, good. If there's a specific success story, you, you spoke about use cases already. So is there a specific success story you want to mention today? Um, Yeah, I can mention several. Uh, one is the publicly traded company that I mentioned. They're called Dusting Group, so you can check them out. We have case studies on our website. If you're interested, you can just um, um, search for Dustin on our website. You'll see their case study. They also have a webinar on the topic, how they replaced Hyper-V VMware and a, a, a multiple vendors, sand vendors with one unified uh, storage platform running on Open Nebula and KVM in, in their case. Uh, we have another one that's a leading uh, many service provider in the UK. Uh, they're called Amito, and they have also uh, multiple data centers with multiple deployments and uh, multiple uh, SAN solutions that they replaced in Unified O with Storpool platform. Also very demanding workloads for uh, B2B customers. Uh, mm -hmm. And another one that I can mention also available on our website, that's a new one, uh, that's um, Catapult, they're called by a company called Crystal, a UK company that's doing the fastest, arguably the fastest public cloud in on the market today. You can also find them on our website, the case study. Um, excellent technical team with an extremely good understanding of uh, the whole IT stack. Uh, and we're providing the, the best uh, block storage solution for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and for example, they said they want to provide object storage as well. And for that, they were choosing other vendor because we were, as, as, as I said, we want to be the best in work. We don't want to be the best in everything because we don't believe in that. So we want to be the best in work. And, and you can sh you can see uh, the performance metrics on our website. You can find them. Uh, you know, we've measured to Amazon. We've measured to Google. We've measured yeah. to Microsoft Azure. And they just beat them big time, you know, much, much faster. 
I, I'm, uh, I heard about that already. So we had uh, the okay. other Bowian talking on our event and we will have a, doing a webinar end of the month about performance issues and, and benchmarking against the others. So it's a really, really um, interesting field. Let's have a look in the future. What's on the roadmap for, let's say, the next two years? Okay, so um, I think we're going in um, stronger into the container world uh, with our uh, continuous improvement of the uh, integration that we have and also uh, talking to customers and scaling that line of the business. Um, mm -hmm. uh, also, we are uh, starting to onboard more larger enterprise customers. So that requires also covering uh, some other technologies like um, Oracle and um, you know VMware in, in two largest and Microsoft technology. So I think uh, there are a couple of um, directions uh, mm -hmm. that we're going. Um, one is um, improving the store storage platform, meaning we can do. Uh, different integrations and today you can have one storage system that services multiple IT stack which I think is rather unique on the market. You can have a store pool system that services VMware, Hyper-V, bare metal, Kubernetes, OpenStack all from the same storage platform servicing multiple IT stacks helping you migrate data and, and, and eliminate options in, that plot, in these platforms. And that's one area we're going to be improving over the next couple of years. The other one is uh, improving the data functionality in Stroopo and adding more uh, data management features. So one thing, for mm -hmm. example, which we don't have today, we're working and developing is visual coding, and that's one of the things. Uh, potentially uh, having uh, better integrations for uh, object and, and file. Again, they're not going to be core of the platform because there are other guys that are doing a good job, but we're going to uh, you know, combine them in, in, in a neater way uh, than our customers are using today. So today you can get a, a, um, a gateway and put NFS or uh, object store on top of Struple, but we'll make it a bit uh, better and more user friendly for the customers. Mm -hmm. Is there a geographical or vertical um, focus um, you do you have? That's also a very good question. So we don't have a geographical focus. We target uh, mm -hmm. on terms of use case. Anybody who needs a shared storage system that's very okay. fast, that's reliable, that's very efficient, that's very uh, mm -hmm. robust, new age, and at the same time, very mature. So we've been running in production for about eight years now. Uh, we have petabytes and petabytes of mission critical yeah. data with very large enterprises. So it's a very mature product. It's best in class mm -hmm. in the new age software defined solutions, but also very mature. Um, and uh, we're looking to kind of uh, deliver it to anybody globally who needs that. Um, mm -hmm. It's and on a vertical industry. I think most of our customers are public cloud. There are many service providers, infrastructure as a service, cloud and hosting, mm -hmm. uh, telcos. But also we have more and more uh, traditional enterprises or um, SaaS companies, for example, some gaming companies. So uh, again, most of them just need that high performance, reliable software uh, solution. Yeah, I guess it depends also on the, um, not, not only on the company size, but on the, the business of the companies and um, the ISPs, the service providers and telcos. Um, they, they have the largest data centers and the largest amounts of data uh, by nature. Correct. So um, what is your sales strategy then? Um, what um, what are your competitors? Um, yeah, so this is, um, what's your strategy and who do you see as your competitors? Competitors? Okay, so. Um, so we mostly go to my ma market direct uh, today. Uh, we also have some partners, like in Germany, for example, we're working with RNT uh, Rao, uh, extremely proficient companies. We have a couple of other partners. We're very selective in the companies we work with. Uh, so we're looking for a very technical team that has very good understanding of storage and um, mm -hmm. providing entire solutions, not only uh, moving boxes left and right. So. Uh, this is our, you know, a handful of uh, partners. Uh, apart from that, uh, most of the uh, companies that become our customers just find us online. They're looking for a good software defense resolution and we're fairly visible in that domain. 
Um, who is our competitor? In the old days, it used to be new age flash vendors, companies like uh, Nimble Storage and Solidfire. Uh, but these days, they got acquired by um, uh, the, the large uh, companies, and we're mostly competing with uh, guys like Dell EMC, HP, and NetA these days. Okay. Surely okay. with uh, other software solutions that are not uh, as fast or not scale up, like typically maybe upgrading the performance of Ceph or replacing uh, a non-scalable infrastructure that uh, nobody wants to run a, a scale-up architecture anymore like ZFS and they want a scale-out fast system uh, like ZFS, but faster and scale-out. And uh, sometimes we replace that type of solutions. But it's mainly tier one uh, sand vendors these days. Okay. So you don't have a partner program in place yet? It's... Um... Okay. Let's no, talk about no. a little bit. No, sorry. Uh, not yet. At some point, maybe we'll have to obviously to, to, to scale more and accelerate even more uh, the growth of the company will uh, design a program. But at the time being, we're still more selective and uh, considering uh, partners on one one on one basis to see are they having a technical DNA? Do they share the same market segments? For example, we don't sell a lot in healthcare. And if you're uh, specialized in healthcare, maybe we're not a good fit at that point in time. So that's why we're still don't have a, a kind of a design program around um, uh, mm -hmm. channel partners, for example. But we do uh, look into specific uh, requests on, on a case by case basis. Okay, I guess it's not that easy to find partners for um, for, for that kind of business you're doing. So partners is is good in an SMB market where um, to to provide smaller companies with solutions and uh, products, but um, in in the pure solution selling and where every landscape is individual, maybe um, partners are not that easy to find. I, I guess. But uh, nevertheless, you already mentioned a partnership with uh, Rausch Network here in Germany, which is a strategic partnership, I assume. So w will you tell me a little bit more about that? W what is the, the content of the partnership? What are you doing together? And um, yeah, what's your, your goals? Okay, so uh, as I said, um, we've been seeing uh, r and at uh, the German CloudFest, the ex-world hosting days, uh, we've seen their capability extremely good, uh, extremely technical. They know their stuff inside out. Uh, and mm -hmm. we set out to see how we can partner together. They're looking also for a, a company that can, they're basically coming from a hardware background and we're coming from a software background. And in the end, customers need both software and hardware delivered to their data center. So it made a lot of sense to kind of combine uh, both things. And mm -hmm. uh, the first iteration that we have uh, were, is or was a, a platform that you're providing hardware that we can install and we can deliver to a customer ready solution, hardware and software pre-installed delivered in their data center. And we're working on newer platforms around um, HCI solutions and also uh, standalone storage of, uh, uh, solutions, uh, but these are uh, something that we'll be seeing um, early next year. Okay. Um, talking about hardware and software combined together, I, I think, yeah, mo most of the companies uh, want one vendor for everything and, and need, um, yeah, the... Uh, one kick in the ass, I uh, call it, um, approach. <laughs> so, uh, but but us um, usually your product is a is a software um, you're you're selling, and um, I think many customers are having existing deals with HP or Dell or somebody, and um, are more interested in just putting the software on their existing hardware or on their existing contracts. Um, does it has any um yeah do, does it have something to do with the um guarantees then so um I, I see the approach to put software on hardware or onto hardware so you have everything under your control and you can uh, give guarantees you can uh, give higher slas um, support is much easier when a customer has a problem with the appliance um, if you are just selling software and the customer puts it on their own hardware, um, the finger pointing uh, game is uh, lurking around and everybody is so, uh, yeah, 
whose fault is it? Who is responsible for that uh, problem then? So are you more interested in selling appliances or? Um, you're right to a certain extent, but I think there are two different um, types of customers with different um, drivers, different decision-making um, drivers. So there are the companies that would rather have a, a one-stop shop solution bundled with the hardware delivered by one vendor. And for that, we're working, for example, with RNT to deliver that smoother experience for that type of customers. There are also other types of customers who have large scale and they already have been working, let's say, with HP or Dell or some other company for mm -hmm. you know a number of years. And they would want to standardize on, let's say, uh, a platform from HP, both for the storage and for the server devices. So in that case, we have a compatibility list uh, that mm -hmm. uh, first we can certify that a particular server is a good fit for running Storkle. Okay. And that we can do with Dell, with HP, with Supermicro, with Quant, uh, you know, with anybody pretty much because it's on a component mm -hmm. level, uh, mm -hmm. basically qualifying CPU, NICs, and SSD devices. So it's very wide compatibility. We can work with any server vendor. And also we do it in such a way that eliminates the finger pointing. So we have a very clear uh, separation line of when it's a storage or store related issue or, and, and when not. And that thing also allows us to run on standard servers, which allows us to sometimes run hyperconverge, sometimes run a standalone storage, or sometimes as a hybrid. About 50% mm -hmm. of our customers are running hyperconverge storage with us or hyperconverge systems, where they're running both compute mm -hmm. and applications on the same physical servers. Some okay. about, you know, maybe a, a bit less than 50% uh, are running segregated, so they have a stack of uh, servers and. So a rack of standard servers again, but running Storkle for the storage service. And some have a mixed deployment when, where, where some servers are hyper-converged, some servers are client only running only applications, and some servers are storage only in the same clusters. It's very mm -hmm. and flexible with um, the software defined approach, with, which allows them to add, for example, if they need more storage, they just add storage. If they need more CPU and RAM for running applications, they can add only compute servers, which you cannot mm -hmm. do with hyper coverage appliances. You cannot do with standard uh, SAN and server approach. So okay. that's also a very uh, useful uh, benefit of, of running uh, best in class software defined storage solutions. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Um, when we just come, let's come back to the the partners and customers. So. Uh, when you're develop, uh, developing software, um, as a customer, I could have uh, the idea to um, ask you if you could um, customize the code for me, especially. W will you do that? Um, I think especially of companies like Zalando or Booking.com or all the others, they are developing their own hardware. They have a lot of developers uh, developing software for them. But maybe they want to get some best of breed solutions as well. So would that be a use case for a straw pool as well? Definitely, definitely. Um, so we've been also um, working with this type of companies, mm -hmm. uh, exactly the type that you mentioned. And uh, we try to uh, make a, a, a standard product, right? We're a product company delivering software. Uh, sometimes we have integrations around it. Sometimes we deliver extra features, but usually we uh, do so when we see market demand for this feature, not for, for just one customer, but if it makes sense uh, for this type of um, um, companies, if they're a large enough market and if the feature makes sense, we'll develop this feature and we've done so. Uh, so it's still... Um, you have two, two layers. One layer is what touches the core of the product itself. Does mm -hmm. what the customer asks to be customized actually make sense for many other customers so we can include and refactor the, the core of the software? Or is, okay. this, is this something that's done outside of the core of the software? Either integration, uh, for example, that's how we added cloud stack integration. We're one of the very few storage providers that have extremely good cost stack integration and it comes from one customer uh, that's not core in the product. So we said, okay, we can do it. We also have uh, several other customers using it and we're kind of one of the 
very good options for cloud stack. And in many cases, we have feature requests like that in bigger POCs with the companies that you mentioned. Uh, so, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, we spoke a lot about about hardware and software. So, but when talking about cloud. Um, there's also uh, DevOps not far away. And a couple of days ago, I read that you met, uh, announced a partnership with another Bulgarian promising startup. It's um, ITGIX. I know that they are specialized on uh, processes and DevOps and project management and things or uh, ISO certifications. So uh, ca can you talk a little bit about this partnership? What are you doing together? What's your common goal? Sure. Um, so they come from the background of doing uh, services around two particular platforms. One is OpenStack, mm -hmm. the other one is Kubernetes. So they bridge the gap uh, for companies that don't have the skill to deploy these solutions by themselves or don't want to spend the time, money, effort hiring people to manage these stacks. So they were kind of like a service company that would come and would in mm -hmm. install and support uh, working cloud. And you can go to somebody like Red Hat or Canonical or SUSE to do that for OpenStack, for example, or Mirantis, but that would be one fairly more expensive. And then they would uh, present something that's very heavy in terms of uh, processes, in terms of uh, uh, code base. Uh, so they specialize in this uh, maybe uh, mid-tier where they can come with uh, um, very streamlined deployment that's very automated, lightweight, and they'll deploy it and they'll make sure it works and they'll support it for you. So you as a customer don't have to hire five people managing your open stack system. And obviously to do that, they need best in class storage. They can use existing tools like Ceph, but that would be very small. That's not competitive. Any anything is doing anybody else is doing that. So first you don't have differentiator, second and more importantly, the source for that customer is going to be slow. And in, the, in that case, they're bundling Stroko, uh, be it for larger bare metal Kubernetes or for open stack deployment, and they're delivering to market. And that's also something that we don't do ourselves. Of course, as uh -huh. a storage vendor, we specialize in continuing to make the best storage software for block level workloads mm -hmm. even better. And we kind of spend our focus there and they're helping the customer to get what they need. Uh, that's aside from hardware, obviously, to have the, the full software stack for running a cloud, and they're kind of like the DevOps company that builds it, supports it, and manages it for customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's more an integration partner then for... Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, good to know. Also, yeah, solution provider for basically well, yeah. entire stack for, for companies. Because yeah, not, not only it, integration also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, and then kind of like a system integrator and then a managed mm -hmm. service provider on the software stack. Yeah. And then okay. a cloud consists of three hardware pieces like uh, compute, storage, and network. Um, mm -hmm. Where is the camera here? Um, and also, obviously, a bunch of software. So we have the operating system, the hypervisor, the cloud management, the SDS if you're doing SDN. So somebody has to put all these things together. In this case, uh, ITG is, is the company to do that, especially if you uh, decide to go with OpenStack or, or uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, good to hear. Get to hear. So, and it reminds me, I have to uh, give Nelly a call again. Anyways, we are at the end. Thank you very much so far. Do you have any famous last words everybody needs to know at the end? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, I think um, stay safe, uh, safe still, stay healthy, and uh, we really hope for this. Uh, uh, situation to go away soon so we can actually start meeting people again, come to Qualfest, drink some beers and uh, kind of talk to people. I think um, that that's uh, we're missing the human touch and we'll be happy to go back oh, to yeah. kind of the new normal. So um, stay well and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is really, really a good wish for everybody. And yeah, I, I too hope that we will see on CloudFest soon again next. Yeah, maybe not next year, but the year after. And yes, yeah, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you so much, Boyan, for your time. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.